Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Joni Young and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this fun Halloween spooky lantern with a little black crow uh, landscape on a 12 by 16 primed canvas. I just used one coat or applied one coat of acrylic gesso, let it dry. I've got a large blending brush, small filbert, small flat and a liner brush. I've also got these colors right here, black, prism violet, neon yellow cool, and neon yellow warm. Look below this video in the description box for a full list of the colors and the brushes that we're using today. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is just get my canvas a little bit wet. Apply a thin coat of water with a large brush like this. And what this does is helps to let the paint blend and glide much easier on the canvas than when the canvas is dry. So you're applying wet paint on a wet canvas, wet on wet technique. So just a little bit wet here. You don't want puddles of water on your canvas. And we're just gonna start the background with this pretty purple. And I'm just gonna load my brush up on the tip like this and just start working my way around in a continuous oval or circular motion like this. I'm gonna add more and more. The idea is to make it blend in nice and smoothly and have it get a little bit lighter here in the center. Darker on the outside. So I'm just gonna come in from the outside here and just apply more of this purple. This is a really pretty purple. This is a new um, shade of purple that I've added to my palette. I find sometimes if we're getting a little bit um, loss of motivation, Maybe sometimes we can get caught up in the same routine and paint with the same colors over and over and we start to lose interest. I think this is a great way to, this in combination with some other things, great way to stay motivated is by adding a few new colors to your palettes. Okay, so I'm going to leave it just like that. I'm going to wash all of the purple out of my brush. I'm going to dry this off and then go over with a thin coat of a little bit of black and a little bit of white. Okay, so this is all dry now and I can come in with another coat of paint. This time I'm going to apply a little bit of white and a little bit of black. This is going to create a few little shadows and some soft gray tones that will really enhance this painting. So this time, I'm not gonna go around in that circular, consistent without taking my brush off the canvas motion. I'm just gonna scumble, and you can hear that noise, right? That's a dry brush. And already this painting has got a spooky, kind of an eerie feel to it just by adding a little bit of this with this dry brush technique. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like that. And now I'm going to start coming in with the post or pillar that we've got on this side. And I'm going to take black with purple, just because I've got a lot of purple here. I may as well use it. And it's a really beautiful color mixed with that black, like a dark, dark, deep eggplant color. So I'm going to start about a quarter of the way down here. And I'm going to pull right to here. And then it's gonna go on a slant, but I'm gonna make it kind of wiggly. 
for that ornate uh, trim work, giving it more of a, a neat kind of ornate design. And then wiggle, wiggle. And we're just going to go straight down. We don't have to paint this in solid black either. In fact, you want to have a few lines and areas that are just sort of this dry scumble brushwork so we can see a few lighter tones in here. And just pick up a little bit of water on my brush. That really helps um, lengthen the paint throughout my brush stroke. A little bit more. So you can see I'm coming in from both sides and kind of creating these block brush strokes. So this way, and then a few this way. I'm not gonna see a whole lot of uh, detail here. We're gonna have some overgrown vines and thorns, but I'm gonna take a little bit more of my black now. And I'm just gonna add a thin line right on the top here, and then have that join. And if I go over, just slightly, I can bring that out and make that longer and come out a little bit further. It doesn't make any difference at all. And I'm going to paint this area right in here, solid black. I want this to have shadow and more of a contrast. And then I'm going to bring out this area here. Just for some more architecture. I want that old haunted house vibe to this painting, like an old manor or castle that has those beautiful ornate gates with a big lamp post on the corner of it. Now what I'm going to do, just dry my brush off, take a bit of that gray, a little bit of purple, and a little bit more of the white. And I'm just going to turn my brush like this and very lightly drag. Now I know I need just a little bit more here, so just to create some highlights and an old texture to the whatever it is, concrete or marble, whatever this is made out of. Okay, I'm ready to start working on the next part. And for the next part, I'm going to be using black. Again, just use up the rest of that purple. And we're going to work on the hanger that comes out here, an ornate hanger. So I'm going to start this right just below, just below halfway across the canvas. So just eyeball it. That would be halfway. So I'm going to go just right about here. And I'm going to go just slightly on an angle. You can barely even see that, right? On a slight angle like that. And you want to make it about 
that thick. If you want to make it a little bit thicker, you can. And then I'm going to go down this side here. All the way down at the bottom. I want this to be solid black so I can separate that from, oops. I have a little squiggle that came out of the loose hair on my brush. So I'm going to leave that because there's going to be so many uh, little vines um, and thorns and things. So that can just be part of it. I'm just going to do a little line on the end here, just using the corner of my brush and switch over to this brush first. And if I have a difficult time, then I'll switch over to one of my brown brushes. Now, if you want to sketch your ornate uh, design out first, go ahead. I really just kind of love to uh, eyeball it and do my own sort of a thing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start right here. I want to make this a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to come around this side. If you have a hard time um, doing this type of scroll work for the level of, or your skill level, uh, what you can, another alternative are those paint pens. You could uh, use one of those paint pens. You can get acrylic paint pens. And you can also use a Sharpie. But if you want to get better and learn how to do this uh, with a brush, then just practice ahead of time. It's actually really satisfying. I enjoy it. I find it a relaxing process. I have a hard time creating straight lines, but I've always been able to do flowing curvy lines like this. Whatever you don't like, don't worry, you can kind of camouflage it and cover it up with the lines that we're going to add. So I'm going to go from here. And start to curve and swirl down. I'm going to make this line thicker. and bring this up higher and thicker as well. And you continue with 
my ornate scroll work here that has really no um, pattern at all. Just freehanding this and having lots of fun. I find it easier to make up my own designs than to try to follow one, especially when it's got a lot going on, like these ornate kind of patterns. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that and then I'm going to start adding the bottom part of the lamp post which is going to come out right about here. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit more, the part of the lamp post and then it goes down on an angle like this in a little triangle. And then a little circle. Put another thin line or skinny rectangle. We'll paint that in and then a narrower A rectangle below that and I'm going to switch over to my flat brush now okay so with my flat brush I'm just going to take a little bit of this black and just going to start by adding a line on a slant like this Okay, so you want to just line this up here, then we're going to pull it over, then let it go slanted up like this, bring another line out just, just to there. And this is going to be black. Add another line on the slant. And then this one is going to come out. And then we're going to join them. Make that a little bit thicker. I'm going to add a little flick on the end. See how I did that? So it looks like it's pointed up. Kind of scoops up off the end like that. Now we'll work on the top. 
So right from here, where these lines meet, I'm going to go on a little slant. This one's going to be start to slant straight, but then start to slant that way. And then from here, I'm going to scoop. I'm going to push a little bit of this off here. Then we're going to go cross and join those. Join them. Add a little flick. Okay, and then we're gonna inside here, not from this end, but partially in, so about a quarter of the way in, we're gonna go up and turn, line our brush up right here, curve, pull a line across, we'll just thinly paint that in because it's gonna be uh, it's not going to be solid black. And then for the little thing, the top on here, it's a bit rounded. So I'm going to switch over to my little filbert brush because it's got that round end on it. And that's what I really need. So I'm going to do or make a little flat pancake shape, a little oval or a little egg. It helps when you say the shapes of what you're painting out loud. It just really helps take that um, pressure and that intimidation away. If you can look at things and break them down into simple shapes, like an egg or a square or a rectangle, um, it really does help. Give that a try if you're ever struggling. This line right here, I could leave this and use it as one of my little branches or vines. But it's distracting me a little bit right now, so I just want to take that off. Okay, and then I'm going to start to paint the rest of this in now. I'm going to go back to my flat brush here. And it's not solid black in here, so I'm actually going to take a little bit more of my purple. Bit of white and a little bit of the black. I want it darker than the background, so make sure that it's not as dark as the black, but it's gonna be darker than your background, right? So all I'm gonna do is just kinda loosely paint this in. Okay, that's darker than the background. That's good, that's what we want. And then on this side, it's a little bit darker, but it's not solid black. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more of my black to this. So we can see that it's like a, a shade uh, darker than this side. And then I'm gonna just go up here. I'm gonna add a little bit of white, bring that up a shade lighter. And just add a little bit inside of here. Leave that line so we see that separation and just carefully paint inside, leaving the outlines black. Now if you want, you can add a little something down here, but it's not really necessary. I'm just going to try to create a little bit of a texture or pattern here, adding just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I don't want to. That's still going to dry darker than the rest, but overall, I think that looks good. Okay, I'm going to go over with my black 
make sure everything's nice and the edges are nice and cleaned up. Right up there, I'm going to bring a little bit of black up so it goes up into a little scoop and point just like this does. And that as well. A little bit on the edge here. And a little bit of a shadow underneath that line. Okay, now I want to create the bright light in here. So I'm going to take a little bit of my grayish purpley color here first and make it look like this lamp post, the glass on it is kind of dirty. Just scumple lightly down here. What this is going to do is it's also going to really help the bright light stand out more. And then I'll add a little bit. Gives it an old, dusty, just a film over the glass. Add a little bit to the top of this. I'm going to use my finger as a guide. Flat brush would be best for this if you don't have a steady hand. So I'll add a little bit more light in here on the stone. Okay, now I'm going to come inside and add the light. Make sure your brush is nice and clean. No drips. We're going to start with a little bit of white and this neon yellow warm. Now, if you need an alternative, if you don't have these colors I'm using today, leave a comment below asking me and I'll give you some other options for color choices, okay guys? So I apply most of the paint inside, right? And then as the paint starts to get less and less in my brush, it fades out off to the side. And if you still have a lot of paint in your brush, just wipe the excess off on the towel. And I'm gonna come inside Add a little bit more white again. This, I might need to um, add a few more layers once this uh, dries because acrylic paint always dries a little bit darker. It helps to have that gesso um, primed canvas, but uh, even still, it's just an acrylic thing.
I'm gonna take a little bit of this lamp post light color. Again, I like to use my pinky to help steady my hand and just keep going, try to do it all in one brush stroke. Just a little bit of light casting there. We could have a little bit here on the outside as well. Just a little bit of a glow. Okay, it's time for another layer. This time I'm gonna take a little bit of my neon yellow. And just lightly tap around here, less on this side, wipe the excess off on my towel. Take a bit of that orange, or well, it looks orange, right? It's technically the neon yellow warm. So now we're going to create that warm, soft light. And all the spookiness around the outside and the cold feeling you get. We've got this safe feeling, nice comforting feeling of this light, warm light in this lamppost. Okay, I'm going to leave that and I'm going to start painting the bird. And just with uh, my little filbert brush, you can use any small brush that you feel comfortable with. A round brush would be great. So I'm going to start with a little beak, head, comes around, over and down. Slant. And out for the tail. Just a little black bird in silhouette. We don't have to worry about painting the eyes or anything. Now, in here, I'm going to add some background color so that we can see some feet. I could have started my bird up a little bit higher, um, but this is how you can fix that if you've done the same thing as me. I'm just going to come over this end here. And... Bring this down a little bit lower. And then into the black. And we'll add a little leg here. And then just make this area down here towards the tail a little bit 
rounded. Bring the head up a little bit higher. And now I can come back here and add a little bit more black. And I think everything's spaced out just fine now. I like this better. Okay, now we can start working on the vines. And I'm really excited about this. I love painting vines. So I'm gonna use my liner brush, some of the purple and water and black. And we can just start to wiggle. We're just gonna twist and wiggle Make it look like they're wrapping around. Now where I want it to show up a little bit more wrapping around this, I'm going to use more black so that it shows up. And then we're going to have them come in and around intertwining all throughout this area and of course over the lamppost. For thinner ones that are a little bit more delicate and see-through like this, just use more water and barely touch the canvas. I'm gonna make it look like there's some thorns, just little dabs and flicks like this. I have some wrapped around here.
the less time I take to try to decide where to add them, the more natural I find that it looks. So try to just be in the moment a little bit more while you're painting and not to plan too, too much when it comes to adding these. And then they'll look a little bit more wild I'll just do a few more here before I call this painting all done. I'm gonna make a few of them come out and be a little bit more swirly and wiggly. have a few cores that are going to be dangling down right over top. Okay, I'm going to call this painting all done. This was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Happy Halloween and happy painting. See you all next time. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Bye, everybody.